Let's illustrate the application of simple random sampling in a marketing context. Let's imagine that we were hired as marketing researchers for a company that spe specializes in teletherapy. In particular, this company sells an annual service contract with individuals who use their teletherapeutic services. Our goal is to figure out, on average, the percentage chance that an individual will renew their annual service contract. Managing customer churn is a very important issue for any sort of contract-based customer-facing business. So this is a pretty standard style of research question we might investigate. In particular, this company wants to understand the likelihood of renewal strictly among those customers who do not have a college degree. For our sampling frame, the company randomly selected 100 currently paid up customers from its customer database and presented them to us. These 100 emojis that we see here represent each one of those customers. Further, let's presume that somebody else, not us, has already calculated the optimal sample size that we require for purposes of our later analysis. Other videos and content cover how we exactly calculate this optimal sample size, but for now, let's not worry about it. Let's assume that we need to sample 20 individuals from this sampling frame of 100. Obviously, this is a rather small optimal sample size, but it'll illustrate the idea of simple random sampling easy enough for us. Now, keep in mind, we have a sampling frame of all paid customers. What do we do since we only want to study those individuals who do not have a college? degree? Well, there's really two scenarios. In the first scenario, we might have already known these individuals' education level prior to conducting our study. Maybe the, the company already tracked someone's highest level of educational attainment as part of their CRM system. If that's the case, we merely exclude these individuals, filter them out from our sampling frame, and then engage in simple random sampling. Alternatively, if we didn't know their level of educational attainment, we would simply random sample the entire from the entire frame, and then we would use a screening question at the beginning somewhere in our survey, identify someone's educational level, and screen out those individuals who actually have a college degree. Of course, in that case, we would have to sample more than 20 because some people probably have a college degree. In the example here, let's imagine that we already knew whether or not somebody had a college degree. There they are. We simply exclude those 10 individuals, now our sampling frame is reduced to 90, but our objective of sampling 20 remains the same. In simple random sampling, each customer that remains in the sampling frame has an equal chance of being selected. At this point, we use any fair randomizing mechanism to select the 20. We could certainly use something like bingo balls or a lottery drawing tool. Typically, we use some sort of computer algorithm to generate a random ID and select individuals that way. It also should be noted at this point, we're assuming that when we sample these 20 individuals, all 20 of them will agree to participate in the study and will complete the study. If you've ever seen how many times you're asked to take a marketing survey and neglected to do so, you know that's not going to be the case. We'll talk in another video and set of slides about how we determine exactly how many people we really have to contact in order to reach a final sample size of a certain number. For now, let's just assume that everyone that we select will indeed participate, so we just need to sample 20. This could represent a random subset of 20 individuals being selected. Here's an alternative random selection. And here's another alternative random selection. Or is it? Does this selection of 20 individuals looks random to you? Actually, it's a bit of a trick question. It's the process of selection that determines if the sample was fairly randomly selected, not someone's subjective assessment after the fact of whether or not it looks random. So even though all of our selections are bunched around the four corners, that really doesn't tell us whether it was random or non-random sampling. Instead, it was the actual process of selection itself that determines if simple random sampling was done. That's actually a very important point and one that humans often get wrong. When we do random drawings, it's common for people to look at the results and say, it doesn't look random enough. That is a fatal flaw in understanding. It's the process of selection. Sometimes that process creates things that look like patterns.